What in the world is going on? Ladies and gents, today we have a 2022 Subaru WRX Premium. There's the base, the premium, the limited, and the GT. So this is the middle trim and arguably the best bang for your buck starting around $32,000. Styling, of course, very polarizing this generation with the plastic cladding, but I don't think it looks terrible. Not a car that I would mind owning myself from a pure visual perspective. But the owner has done a few tasteful mods, some minor things. The car is mostly stock. We've got these stock 18 inch wheels wrapped in Dunlop Sport Max GT 600A tires, section width of 245 all around. EBC brake pads, stock rotors, STI exhaust, as well as some of the skirts, aero trim pieces all around. We have this JDM STI flexible strut tower bar. Also, he did in the front and rear draw stiffeners, which generally isn't available in the US. We have to order it from overseas and get it installed. Onto the interior. Cobb shift knob, STI short shift kit. Let's get some air going. You know, I appreciate that at least the temperature controls here are physical, but I gotta say that you know, the, the piano black and the, you know, the really large blocky screen, thick bezels, not, probably not gonna age well. Pretty upright seating posture, which I mean, you'd expect. This is a, a four door WRX, right? It's not a, a sports coupe, but just keep that in mind. Turbo four cylinder, cranking out 271 horsepower. 258 pound-feet of torque and the vehicle weighs 3,300 pounds so you know not a super special power to weight ratio but first impressions Jesus this is way sharper than expected what in the world I drove a WRX previously prior gen and I've driven an STI recently as well and you know, with the WRX in, in this vehicle, you're not gonna have the LSD front and rear like you have in the, in the STI, and that does a lot to transform the vehicle. But compared to that other WRX I drove, this thing just feels way sharper. Really pointy front end. And I mean, the, the suspension is stock. And yet this thing, really direct steering, completely devoid of feedback. but super direct, super sharp, nice, decently fast ratio. And look at the body control. Like this thing is not really squatting, diving, tilting, not too much. You know, we're pretty comfortable. Like I am, I am very impressed. Now granted, he has done some chassis stiffening modifications that's gonna help with the responsiveness but those few little things, I would like to drive this back to back with a totally stock one to see how big of a difference. But the driving experience here, I am, I am very impressed. I mean, this is a 30, 32, 3,300 pound car and it's handling a lot better than it should at this, at this weight and this size. The throttle response is a little bit uh, delayed. Gotta give it the, throttle a much harder blip. Remember, this is turbocharged. Yeah, even giving it full throttle at 4K, a little bit of lag to really spool things up to get that surge. Brake pedal doesn't inspire as much confidence as I would like. It's ever so slightly spongy. The initial grab isn't as aggressive as I would like either. But this is, a, this is a vehicle that clearly is serving as a canvas is, uh, is a great starting point. Like I'm, I am very impressed that a stock, mostly stock WRX can handle this good, this tight. Still able to put the power down mid corner without much issue. Of course, so red line sneaking up on me. It's only 6,000. You kind of expect it to keep going. Yeah, heel toe is not as natural. Really need to blip the throttle hard. I wish I had more opportunities to downshift, but this this road is mostly just second gear. Let's see. Let's let's do a little short shift. Yeah, let's try that again. There we go. 
smooth heel toe, but you have to be pretty uh, judicious with your throttle input. Oh my god, but the way this thing corners, uh, uh, WRX shouldn't corner like this stock. What in the world is going on? Super sharp handling, really impressed. Very responsive front end, especially for a for a vehicle like this. And at you know thirty two thousand dollars, I think you're getting a lot of driving experience. Now keep in mind the engine isn't really you know that special, but it depends on your your preferences. And and for me, I care a lot more about handling and driver enjoyment and reward rather than just the auditory experience and you know getting pushed back in my seat. And I can compromise on an engine personally, but I think this engine would bother a lot of other people. And granted, there are options for modifying these to the moon, but Subarus don't also have the, the most reliable reputation for their flat four engines. The short shift kit, I can tell it really tightens things up. It feels nice and tight and the throws aren't too long now. But something feels kind of light about it. As I, as I row through the gears, it's not a bad thing, it's just, it's just notable because a lot of the inputs in this vehicle are quite light. The steering, very, very light. Feels a little overboosted for my taste. The transmission, very light when you're going between gears. I mean, you're getting that notchiness, you can even hear that between the gears, but it's still very light and easy. Nice and easy to go across gears. That's normally the harder thing to get right in a manual transmission, but they did a good job here. What a competent starting piece for this canvas. A lot better than I expected. I would want to tweak the brakes, you know, change the fluids. I think he has stock brake fluid. Change the, the you know, the fluids and the pads. Get a little bit of a more aggressive brake compound there if you're going to be pushing it. Steering, not sure what you can really do with that. It's super light, a little over boosted, not much feedback. I think you did the right thing getting the short shift kit here. Clutch feel is also a little bit dead and lacking. So this is not a car where you're looking for inputs, right? The, the WRX has never been a vehicle about sharp, rewarding inputs. It's about being able to push the car and go a lot faster than you think you should be able to. And that's really what this car can still do quite well. Really impressed by the handling of this vehicle. Handles its weight incredibly well. Very sharp front end. Puts the power down without issue. And now there's no SDI. So this is, you know, you can go with the higher trim, but you're not gonna be getting better performance at those higher trims. With this with this uh, premium, you already get the bigger screen here, whereas the base has like those two smaller, uh, you know, separated screens little bits in the interior here and there. This is really a lot of bang for your buck. I think for $32,000, if you want a car that is very practical and the fun it brings you is not in the feedback and not in like, you know, rotation and oversteer like in many rear wheel drive coupes, but rather in just being able to, to hammer it on these canyons and, and be amazed that, at, you know, how hard it can pull and how fast it can go, then, this car can definitely be a very worthwhile purchase. I am surprised. I'm normally the, the guy that loves rear wheel drive and you know rotation and inputs, and I want to feel the texture of the road. But even here, you know, it's not the most rewarding, engaging, visceral experience. But it's fun, man. It's a lot of fun. Steering wheel super chunky, which if you have larger hands, is going to feel nice. You know, it's going to feel nice in your palms, but. I can see that for some people it's probably be somewhat of an issue. But my friends, let me know what you think of the 2022 Subaru WRX. If you want your car reviewed, visit us on jabalincars.com, fill out the form. Subscribe if you haven't already. Big thanks to Zygreen for making this review possible. Subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. Big thanks to Bao, the owner of this vehicle, for letting me review his car. Much love, my friends, and I'll see you all in the next one.